Welcome to week eight of Regenerative Soil Microscopy. I'm your host, Matt Powers. We're going to be talking this week about nematodes and microarthropods. So let's start with nematodes because nematodes are number one. Did you know that? They're number one in a few different ways. So they are the most abundant animals on earth. Yeah, if we just go by the number of them, they are the most abundant. And as it says here, nematodes are considered among the most difficult animals to identify. An estimated 10 million species. They're the most abundant. We think 10 million species. Let's keep going. This is identification techniques and recent advances. Let's see that at the bottom there. Despite this, nematodes are among the least studied organisms with less than 0.01% of their species diversity described to date. That was 2020. So 0.01% of 10 million, potentially. Let's keep looking. Exponential decline of deep sea ecosystem functioning linked to benthic biodiversity loss. Nematodes are indeed the most abundant metazoans on earth in terrestrial ecosystems. They account for 80% of the abundance of multicellular animals. 80% of what's there is nematodes. And in the deep sea, the proportion rises to 90%. So if you heard me in the past say that soils in the ocean are just as important we have all these soil food members in different arrangements in different environments, but we see the most common is the most adaptable and the most diverse is what we constantly see over and over and over again. And from that space, we, we need to, let's keep going. <laughs> and that was in 2004. I always like to point out the dates and everything. So the most common, again, is the most adaptable. So what about lookalikes? We've talked about lookalikes before. Well, the usefulness of morphological data for the study of nematode biodiversity in it, it says, when molecular taxonomists rely on sequence data alone, they may describe a, as cryptic species populations of an existing species that are morphologically identical. So they take the position that it's a mistake that, that they show them genetically different and we should disregard the genetics in this paper because it's just going to confuse things. We need to stick to morphologicals because that's who the species are. We just applied a name to what we saw and there are some people that are deeply entrenched in what they see, you know, as the leader. But I feel like we need to be able to balance both of these spaces because you'll see something. Just stick with me. So have you heard about shapeshifters? So uh, they can change their mouth form, their mouth parts, which is what we use to identify them and, and their tail end too. But primarily their mouth parts, yet they have the ability in this species genetically identical nematodes can express two alternative mouth forms which are advantageous under different environmental conditions different foods although the expression of these mouth forms can be influenced by the environment even under fixed environmental conditions genetically identical individuals of p pacificus form both morphs so we just opened a hole of the door. They can adapt in real time. And I'm not saying all of them can, but we have to accept the possibility that this is more common than we realize because of the way we test, the finite nature of our interaction, the dead end nature of our interaction the inability for us to track and trace the lifespan of these organisms as easily it's the soil, it's the wild that is harder to capture. And if you're like mouth parts, what are you talking about? I'm talking about these. So the throat and mouth parts are typically how we 
in a very general way identify who they are in terms of what they eat but if they can switch we need to be careful about what foods we leave out of the cupboards on the counter right (laughs) because we want to attract the things that are cycling the things that we want to be cycled not things that we don't not our roots right so but wait what are nematodes matt i i get that there's they're, they're the most abundant animal I get that they are just as diverse and just as uh, chameleon-like and shapeshifter-esque as all the rest that you've been showing us. Maybe even more so. This is wild. But what are they? Well, they're they're roundworms. Literally, the when we're like those parasitic roundworms, they're the same thing. So nematodes are tiny microscopic worms and they're non-segmented. They're ubiquitous in natural soils. They control protozoa and other nematode populations. They mineralize the soil through their manures and their breakdown of themselves. And they provide nutrients for the soil, food web, and plants. And they consume pathogenic organisms and spores. So you can see it right there in the thermophilic compost. Even with our objective, 40x is our lowest magnification level. We can see a nematode and they're usually swimming around going crazy. So you can see with it with they're there or not. And you can with epifluorescence, you can see what they've been eating in in many ways. So cuz you remember different things glow different ways and you can see if they're they're eating fungi, you can see if they're you know, eating algae. All these things can be seen. So those mouth parts, those throat parts, they're going to guide us. Take a minute to look at those. And then the real thing is a little bit harder to grasp. So I'll just go back and forth again for a second, just so you get grounded. The first one is the bacterial feeder. That's the idealized drawing. But then the real thing is, is, is dynamic and these are great pictures but but it still can be confusing we'll get into why here in a second what if you could verify if your compost was actually doing its job what if you could verify if the inoculants the mycorrhizal inoculants and biofertilizers are actually worth the money spending on them it is all possible and it's all things you can learn in the Regenerative Soil Microscopy 20 week online course. If you wanna learn how to not just understand your soil, but to see that the things you're doing are actually working, that the money that you're gonna spend or or have spent was worth it, so you don't get fooled again. This is the pathway. We need holistic testing, we need holistic microscopy, and we need to combine them in a new methodology regenerative soil microscopy. I hope you join us. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. I'll see you soon.